Wine family, and welcome to Facebook Live with Mandy Song. I'm not supposed to introduce myself. Right? <laughs> we are going to have some fun today, so we're going to we're going to play little games. We're going to talk uh, to Mandisa, new album, kind of where you've been, what's been going on, what's coming up, um, and then we're going to we're going to give away. Some yeah. Mm. yeah. So make sure that you're leaving some comments. Maybe tell Mandisa your favorite song or if you have a favorite memory from one of her concerts from when she's been here. Uh, we're going to go through those comments and three people, one, two, three, are going to win a copy of Mandisa's brand new CD, Out of the Dark, which is available everywhere now, but you get a special CD and she's going to sign and autograph it right here with your name on it in front of you. Hey. See, we got the pen, we got the CD, so we're ready to go. We're ready to roll. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna have some fun with you, and if you're willing, always willing, mm -hmm. we've already had a lot of fun with you. We're gonna play a little game of, of would you rather. There's no prize oh, involved, yeah. but this is just to see. Can where I you, actually? Where you I, are. Can I get this as a prize? Yes. yes. I love this. If you make it through, would you rather? We'll give you the shiny up Oh, it's clean inside. Ew. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's slightly used. Okay, great. You may have the special shine FM cup with a little bit of dust. Yes, it. you got right. a lot more dust. Yeah. It's all yours. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, okay, question number one. Are we ready to go? Let's do it. Okay, question number one. Would you, because I know that your luggage got lost. Yes, girl. Earlier this week. Mm. So you've already had a chance to kind of figure this out, but mm -hmm. would you rather go one week without your makeup or one week without your deodorant? <gasps> That's a horrible choice. It is. I would definitely rather go one week without makeup. Because I essentially kind of had to do that. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, my luggage was lost, and we had to go to a CVS to try to find me some makeup. Uh, no. Apparently, I went to a CVS that has no black people whatsoever that live in the neighborhood <laughs> because everything was your complexion. And let me just say, it was a kind of a struggle. So, yeah, yeah I ended up not Meanwhile, being able to get much you there. you go shopping around my CVS. They have nothing for my complexion. Oh, really? <laughs> That's awesome. We're going to send everything. you off with an emergency kit. Just right. in case. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. We're going to write a Rite Aid. Yeah. All right. So question number two. For one week, would you rather have Cheeto dust on your fingers for one week, for week. or hair made of spaghetti? Uh, you got to pick one. Really? Like, r real hair? Yeah, what do you mean? Sure. Well, I would rather have the Cheeto dust because that's not a big deal. That's a big deal to Why me, man. I can't, if I eat Doritos or Cheetos, I've got to go wash my fingers. It's just a, I, can't, I don't like Did this. you come up with that question? It was me. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, that's a weird choice, Jack. That's she like, liked it, though. I was like, if I had to pick, I mean, I would probably pick the hair. because Why? It, what, because, like, say if you get hungry, at least you can kind of eat your hair. That's disgusting. You can pull it out of your way. So it's spaghetti hair. Like, it's, you just You would walk around it. with spaghetti as hair. I really want you to understand what you're yeah, saying right now. Yeah. As opposed to... To having some stuff on your fingers. Okay. Cheeto so, dust. Or yeah. you have Cheeto fingers. Yeah, well, now Cheeto fingers is something different. Yeah. Che like Cheeto. Now, if I had Cheeto fingers, that would be delicious. Right. <laughs> They'd be gone in like five minutes. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so if you could. Now, this is, by the way, this is a Jack Larkin question. Okay, you know, good. You should ask this one. Or, never mind, I'll do it. Travel, if you could travel on your bus, right? Yeah. Anytime, would you choose for it for a week to smell like a locker room or a petting zoo? Well, it already kind of smells like a locker room <laughs> oh, and because no. I travel with my band. <laughs> so I guess because it's something I'm used to, I would say a locker room. You like, go with it. It's just, it's interesting when people, like, we just got off tour with Toby Mac recently and he came on our bus one time and he's like, it smells good in here. And I'm thinking, and that's because it's a different thing when you're on a bus with nothing but guys. But I have some girls that travel with me, my background singers and my dancers. And so I think we kind of balance out some stuff. Yeah. And we've got perfume and stuff and make it smell a little bit girly. Who's messier? Oh, who's, what do you mean? Who's messier? Because you got the girl the and the guys. And the girls. Who's, who's messier? Well, yeah, we're, we're probably messier. Hmm. I, at least I'm going to say my dancer, Sydney, she's the worst. Like sharing a dressing with her. <laughs> call Sorry, Sid. Sid. I love you. you. Can call it out, girl. But every time <laughs> we, walk into a, we walk into a dressing room, her stuff is scattered everywhere. And I just want to say, girl, like her shoes are over here and her luggage is over here and her makeup is over here. It drives me crazy. I don't know how moms do it. How do y'all do it? Do you feel like mom when you're on tour with no. them? No. Okay. No. <laughs> then you like just get it out of here. Just go I could be their mom, like my dancers and and well, mainly my dancers. Yeah, I'm old enough to be their mom, but no, their mothers yeah. they mother them well. I'm definitely not. I'm their boss. Yeah. But I'm not their mama. <laughs> so there's just minor funk. On yeah. the bus, just yeah. Little, and can I tell you my band? That I name my band Glorious Funk. <laughs> True, and it's not because of how they smell; it's because they sell funky. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. oh my god! Okay. 
that's good. Okay, you've done pretty good. So last Thank question you. here. Um, speaking, you mentioned Toby Mac. Would you rather be seen in public with Toby Mac dressed in a unicorn print romper and a man bun? And Toby's out dressed that way, or I am? No, he is. No. Okay. And wraps all his answers, or Matthew West dressed in gold hammer pants, who replies, "Can't touch this." To every question. <laughs> I would definitely rather walk around with Maddie doing Can't Touch This because that would be hilarious. <laughs> I mean, both would be hilarious, but I feel like I would get a little annoyed with Toby wrapping all of his answers, but I would eat up every moment of Matthew West. Because Matthew, I mean, uh, Toby kind of does wrap his answers every no, now and then. No, he does not. <laughs> I, see, I also feel like maybe Matthew probably already has a pair of hammer pants sure ready yeah. to go. As a matter of fact, I feel like I just saw on Instagram a post of him. He was dressed in some costume. I can't remember what it was. But, yeah, it's not out of the ordinary to see Maddie dressed like that. That needs to be an album cover. I want to see that. It might be. Yeah. We'll have somebody Photoshop. We can make it happen. Just a suggestion. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> wow. uh, well, that's it. So you survived. So you get the cops. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 You did good. Genuine ceramic cup. You did good. Only the finest for me. I love it. We, so let's talk about you for a little bit because we've got kind of our, our first clue. We all saw the GMA interview with Robin Roberts. And, um, you know, we have so many of our listeners that just connect with you and your music. And we have no idea while people are, are being inspired and overcoming in their own, own way, you're like you're like drowning in depression yeah. is swallowing you. What was going yeah. on with you? What's going on? So that? it's interesting, you know, you talking about Overcomer because, um, yeah, that song was inspired by my friend Keisha. She was pregnant with her second child when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. And when I prayed for her, I really believed that God was going to heal her. Um, and so she delivered her son, Brennan. He's beautiful and healthy and perfect and chocolate and the most beautiful child you've ever seen. Um, and he'll turn four in June. But Keisha had one year with him before she went home to be with Jesus. Mm. And I want you to know, singing Overcomer after that, as much as I loved hearing from people telling me that that was their fight song, I hear from a lot of people who also battle breast cancer and they feel like that is their fight song. But the person who inspired it, I was angry. I felt like she did not overcome. Now I know that that's definitely not the case, but in the moment, um, I did all the wrong things. I shut out God. I was angry at him. I turned to food. Um, I had lost, you know, over 120 pounds over the years. I gained it all back and 75 more. Then I was riddled with shame and I didn't want anybody to see me. I hardly left my house for three years. There were a few obligations that I had, but for the most part, I hardly left. I mean, all I wanted to do was sleep. And so for about three years, I was in a pit of darkness that I could not see my way out of. And it was only, you know, through the grace of God, mainly using the hands and feet of my loved ones who fought for me and pursued me. It was only because of that that God lifted me out. Um, and now, you know, the reason why this album is called Out of the Dark is because that is what God lifted me out of. And so I love that now by sharing that, I'm able to then hopefully be used by God to lift some other people out mm -hmm. of a dark pit. I mean, you know, so we kind of look at it, we see this is like a truncated picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, how three years is a long time. It is. And I loved, so if you haven't listened to Out of the Dark yet, you really need to, I put over on my Instagram page, I was like, look, don't listen to just the song unfinished. Like, don't leave it at just mm -hmm. that. So we've gotten into the streaming culture where like, yeah. I just grab one song and yeah. go. This is such a journey, and literally, I started listening to those voice messages, yeah. and they know, like, I'm not gonna, I don't tear up over anything, and I'm like, Aww. I'm like doing the hard <laughs> stuff, it's you true know? Story. Really? True story. And I was just like listening to the voice mm. messages that your friends were leaving you, yeah. and just tell, telling them that they loved you. I mean, how often did that happen? I mean, for about three years. <laughs> And, and that's the thing, I didn't answer any of those messages. Yeah. I didn't answer any text messages. Um, at one point, I had some friends that were banging on my door. And I put earplugs in and went up to my bedroom and acted like they weren't there. Um, I shut out the world. And I want to encourage anybody out there who maybe has somebody who's battling with depression. Um, my friends and my loved ones didn't know this at the time. and. Thank God they didn't give up on me. Yeah. But that's that's like Jesus, you know? He loves us just the way we are, but he loves us too much to leave us there. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you they fought and pursued me, um, that's what Jesus does. And so if you are somebody who has a loved one who is battling with depression, 
do not give up on them. Keep pursuing, keep chasing after them. It may go unanswered, but I look back on that time and thank you God that they did not give up on me because yeah, that first, it's the first track of the album. Mm -hmm. It's called voicemail intro. It's just a snapshot of the tons of messages I received, not just from my friends who had my number. When I, the few times that I got on social media, I got floods of messages from people saying, I don't know why, Nandisa, but you're on my heart, and so I'm praying for you. Wow. And I received messages um, from on-air you know, personalities that I have met from radio stations. And that's what I love about the body of Christ. Like, we are called to be brothers and sisters. And if you read in like 2 Corinthians 5, like it talks about we are to be reconcilers of people to Jesus. And that's what my loved ones were for me. And that's what total strangers were. They were praying for me. And it really is the prayers of the righteous that I believe that I'm still here today. I just, you, and you mentioned people not giving up on yeah. you, but when you're, when you're battling depression or you're battling addiction or anything like that, you, it is such a big lie that's told to ourselves that we, we're stuck. Yeah. And it yeah. seems so obvious to everybody yeah. else. Like if you would just do such yeah. and such and such, you, you, all you gotta do is turn around Ooh. and walk the other way. But until you've, you've yeah. been there, I don't think you understand, so no. you know, need those people that are fighting. Even if you yeah. don't understand and you see that person, you need to keep fighting and praying for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So important. And please don't ever say, all you need to do is dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> Why can't you just? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right. And just know this. If you've never battled it, then maybe just um, know that you don't know what it feels like. But it feels overwhelming. It was so dark. I could not see my way out of it. And... It, here's what I've learned is that it only takes a flash of light to dispel darkness yeah and so for me those flashes of light came through my loved ones it came once I turned on my Christian radio again because I didn't want to listen to anything mm -hmm. that had to do with Jesus I heard a song from Casting Grounds called One Step Away that was a flash of light for me because it said you're one step away from arms wide open one step away from coming mm -hmm. home it was little things like that yeah. it shines down the light and it just takes a little spark in order to be lifted out of the dark and so Ask for, ask God to give you a flash of light. Surround yourself with the people of God. And when God is lifting you out, don't look back at all the mistakes that you've made. You just put your focus right ahead mm -hmm. and put one foot in front of the other. Don't worry about how far you have to go. Just take that very next step. Did you feel abandoned by God during that? No, I abandoned God. Yeah. <laughs> um, he never, never right. abandoned me, but I shut him out. What I felt was angry. At God um, and it wasn't until I brought that to him that I started to receive that healing because somewhere in my mind I believed the lie that I wasn't supposed to talk to God I wasn't supposed to say God why would you allow that to happen yeah that's a lie like God yeah. wants mm -hmm. us to bring that if we feel it he wants us to bring it to him and and so, it too. absolutely mm -hmm. and it is only when we do that can we often that is when we receive grace and mercy and forgiveness but as long as we stuff it down and act like it's not right. there nothing you're not gonna get any healing from but that's that. like it's like so basic with like we would totally apply that to any relationship we have a problem and we really need to talk about yeah. this but when it comes to God it's like no I can't I shouldn't talk to you about this right. and God's like Come to me, all yes. you who are weary, right. burdened, mm -hmm. heavy laden, yeah. so that I can give that's you right. rest. But we have to come to him. But we have to come. That's right. And our ego yeah. says, no, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I don't. And that's, that's what, so when you've, you've overcome that, have you, now, are you seeing in ways that God's used that mm -hmm. and made some really beautiful things. We always yes. say broken things yeah. into beautiful things. That's the word of God, Second mm -hmm. Corinthians 1. The comfort that we ourselves received, we're then able to comfort others with that same comfort. That's exactly my testimony. You know, my life scripture now is Psalm 40, verses 2 through 3, and it says, He lifted me out of the pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a new song to sing, a whole album full of new songs to sing. <laughs> um, and here's my favorite part, verse 3. Um, Many will see what God has done and be amazed, and they will put their faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is what, or they will put their faith in God. It's in Psalms, so Jesus wasn't there quite yet. Um, I love that because that is what God is doing. He is using my story of darkness and he's now able to show others what it means to be lifted out of the dark and into the light of Jesus. That's awesome. What are some other, like, so for me, I think we talked before about my battle with depression yeah. and like exactly what you're saying about the light being switched yeah. up. I used to feel like I was, um, a, I was out in an ocean and yeah. it was a dark ocean mm. and there's nothing and I'm holding onto yeah. a board and I can't. I cannot see the sand on the other yeah. side. Like, I, there's no daybreak for yeah. me. 
And there are moments where all of a sudden, like, things kind of come into view, but then they start to fade out. And I always held on to, um, there's a verse in Psalm that says, the Lord my God lights up my darkness. Mm. And I would always, when I was having the, the dark, Ooh. that dark, like, I would just say that over and over That's and awesome. over again. Yeah. Are there any more yeah. that you just, or anything that you do now, like, yeah. does it ever creep back in? Absolutely. Yeah. Um it's always trying to creep back in. And that's because when you are somebody who's walking with Jesus, you're walking against the enemy. Yeah. And so he's going to do anything and everything in order to snuff out that light that we carry. And so we should not be surprised when we face warfare. Like, of course he's going to attack right. us. Um, it came yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Here's what I know is that I need to tend to my soul every single day because just like the song says, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Um, and so, yeah, I am prone to do that. And so there's some things that I've had to put into place. I'm learning to recognize when I'm starting to go mm -hmm. to that dark place again. And so yesterday, um, I started to see, you know, I got a little pound cake from Starbucks and then I got to the hotel and they gave me a cookie and then I went back for another cookie. The and hotel then, cookie. Yeah, oh, yes, the oh, hotel yeah. cookie. Yeah. Um, and so I realized, <laughs> and look, I'm not. I'm not somebody who says that you should never have that stuff. Right. I'm somebody that says the fact that I ate four of those things in a short amount of right. time, that's an indication right. that I'm starting to turn to that right. way again. You know that that's not healthy that's for right. you yeah. to do. So the first thing I did was, okay, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me that this is what I'm doing, for helping me to recognize it. I immediately texted, I've got a group of prayer warriors. I immediately texted them and say, hey, guys, I'm starting to recognize that I'm starting to go to that place please pray for me. Yeah. They pray and they immediately start sending me messages of encouragement, scriptures. Um, and then I have a new app that I've discovered called Abide. Um, mm -hmm. It streams audio prayers. And so they have lots of different topics on addiction and on strongholds and on anxiety and worry. And so I love that I can just go to like the anxiety and worry button. I can hit stream prayers um, and just prayer after prayer after prayer. And you can put music under it. I love it so much because you are hearing the word of God and you're communicating with Jesus throughout the night. And so I fell asleep listening to it last night. I woke up listening to it this morning. That's it. I am. I'm, pu I'm pulling it up right now. It's amazing. And I'm going to add it to the stream for you guys. Please. And I just contributed um, something with the Abide app. It's for people battling depression. And so it's basically like me doing audio prayers and meditation based on how Jesus lifted me out of the dark. And so if you get the Abide app, just look for Mandisa. You've got um, Mike Weaver has got some stuff on there and there's lots of contributors. It's really, really great. And I hope that the world learns about it and loves it because I love it. It's changed my life. That is awesome. I love that because you, and, and what you had mentioned is like, you're talking about this. You can start over yeah. at any point in the day because yeah. we, we get, you know, we screw up or whether it's mm -hmm. food or drugs or alcohol yeah. or whatever, we, we're in the middle of it and it's like, Okay, we're going to throw the baby out yeah. with the bathwater, yeah. yeah. and we don't have to do that. That's Even right. if it's, you know, coming up on 3 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon, you can start the day over And I love again. that you said that because for me, for somebody who's battled with weight, it would always be, oh, I messed up. I'll start my diet again on Monday. Well, that's me too. Yeah. And sugar is a drug. Like, I'm a recovering dr a drug addict mm -hmm. alcoholic. Sugar was my very first drug. Wow. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had to, uh, you know, I quit sugar yeah. except once a month. Yeah. For <laughs> since December, which is yeah. a terrible time to do it, but the weights come off yeah. and I'm not as hungry. But yeah. it is, I've, I've noticed with the sugar, man, it's yeah. it is a drug. For and sure. everybody has a different thing that they mm -hmm. battle with, and God, it's not the same plan for everybody. I love that we can simply say, Okay, Lord, I messed this up. Here's what the enemy wants us to do Oh, you've blown it now, yep. like you might as well just keep going for it, or you're never going to get over this. Here's what God wants us to do. Lord, oh man, I saw that I started to do this. Please forgive me for turning to something other than you. Please, I, re mm -hmm. I receive your forgiveness, and now I'm just going to keep it moving and receive your forgiveness mm -hmm. and walk in your grace and start over right now. Like, that is what God wants us to do. As long yeah. as we riddle ourselves with shame and say, I'm such a failure, I'm messed up again, we're going to yeah. stay stuck right there. And have you found that the way that you talk to yourself inside your head has changed Absolutely. from where it was to? It's had to, because, yeah, what I have noticed, and especially... Maybe this applies to you guys too, but as women, we beat ourselves up over 
everything. I would not say the same things that I to a friend that I say in That's my exactly head. right. I was on um I use this Marco Polo app with a couple of my friends and so the three of us were doing Marco Polo and in the course of five minutes I was complaining about my my pimples on my chin. I was saying, Oh, look so ugly with these huge pimples. See, and that's the thing. Anything. Well, I, it was so big to yeah. me, but other people, like, I was thinking nobody could look at me without seeing it. See, okay, so, but do you know what I do when I have those days? Wow. I go, I say, hey guys, how are you? Oh, by the way, have you met um, Marcus and Janelle? <laughs> and they'd be like, who's Marcus and Janelle? I'm like, oh, Marcus and this is Janelle. Like, they don't I, even I, see it. They don't, and I feel like I have to call it yeah. out immediately. And Absolutely not. And even noticing. Yeah, so I'm I had the Jack. chin pimples. You'd be, like, <laughs> be like, what's on their chin? It's just my muffin top. Right. That's, yeah, that's so the funny. only thing that I worry about. <laughs> It was amazing because have you seen that episode? It's it's in the movie Mean Girls, which um, they were sitting there in a mirror and they were just saying, "Oh, I hate this about me. I hate my thighs. I hate this." So I was complaining about my chin pimples. My other friend was complaining about. She said that she had laugh lines. My other friend was complaining about her teeth, and I was like, "You guys, what are we doing?" Yeah. Yeah. I really believe that any time that we speak ill of how God created us to be, like. There are some things that I know we do to ourselves, but right. somebody complaining about freckles. I met somebody, a little girl recently that hated her freckles. And I was like, when God knit you together in your mom's womb, he put those freckles on you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so I don't ever want to speak ill of how God created me to yeah. be because he created me beautifully. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And so I want to take control of my tongue. I put on the armor of the Lord every yeah. day. And when I put on the helmet of salvation, I would say, Lord, help me to take captive every thought to make it obedient to you. Help me to see myself and others the way that you do. Help me to hear your voice and yours only. And help me, Lord, to speak life and not death mm -hmm. over myself and over others. Mm -hmm. It's so and important. Jesus, if I could not have two pimples today, that would help me do all this. <laughs> But yeah. even if I do, I know that I am beautiful and fearfully and wonderfully made. Also the muffin top. Hey, you just stop with the muffin top. Yeah. I'm talking about my own. Yeah, you know. Hey, we have, don't we, we've got some CDs to give so away. So we do. And so I'm kind of rolling through some of our comments right now. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Why don't you roll through and why don't you pick some oh, people? You want to do that? I do. Yeah, you know how to work This that. is your most commented on live video yet. Surprise, surprise. Um, let's see. Mercies are new every morning. Is not limited to time of day? And, oh, that's my girl, Emily. All right. Emily Verda is so faithful. Um, oh, do you remember? I met Stacy here. Yes. How, when was that that we did that event? That was probably six years ago because I cooked. We had a big, um, Mandisa came to the station. We had a yeah. bunch of winners who wanted an opportunity to come and have lunch with Mandisa. And I just, I pimped out the you uh, did great. conference room. We had so much fun yeah. that day. How do I, oh, that's how I'm scrolling. There you go. So hi, Stacy. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. There's so many. How about you? You, you help me. me. Yeah. Okay. So there was one on here that I saw, um, Jennifer Crow. She says, I am battling this bad myself right now. She's talking about depression. So I think maybe wow. let's do one okay. for Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer, Jennifer you're so awesome. Jennifer, Absolutely. you got one. Let's lift you up. Yeah. And oh, there's so uh, many comments. I know. Isn't it awesome? Thank you guys so much. And feel free if you have any questions too, you can pop them in. We still have a couple more minutes before Jack and I have to jump on the air. Um, and Mandisa got a roll. Maybe we can squeeze one in here. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. See who else we got here. I'm gonna come back up. Let's get. Let's, I see a guy in here. A guy. Let's get. I saw, nice. Where'd you go? I saw Gary. Here Jennifer. we go. Gary says thank you for your honesty and transparency. Mm. It changes lives. Awesome. It, you know it really does, and it's not not just for Mandy. And I'm so glad because she's not able to change the story. But all of us, God's give everybody a story. He may not give all of us public platforms like yeah. this. But the platform that you have where you are at your job, at your church, wherever, when you're going into the grocery yeah. store, you do that Absolutely. Thing. You yeah, do it. That's good. All right. So let's do one for Gary. Okay. Congratulations, Gary. You've got one. And then we need one more. One more. And let's do Maggie. Maggie blevins Mischler. She says, you're such an encouragement. Mm -hmm. I'm such a, if someone comes to mind, reach out to that person. Never hesitate. It's awesome. Oh, I, know. Nice. I love it. There's a song on my Let's album about that. It's called The One He Speaks Through. Like anytime somebody drops into your spirit that maybe you haven't thought of in forever, or if you see something like on the side of the road and it's just kind of resonating in your heart, 
that is often an indication that God wants you to either reach out or pray for that person or all of the above. Yes. So who, who awesome. was that? That, that, that was man, uh, That's Maggie. 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 Gigi, I Maggie. love that. Good for you, Maggie. It's it's funny that you say that too. I always call it like the God string. Like I imagine this God, this string in the mm. middle of my chest and sometimes it, it gets pulled. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I pull back yeah. and say, nope, 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 yeah. nope. And I wonder sometimes what I'm going to miss out on mm. you know, or if I'll, I'll see one day what I missed out on because I pulled back on that, so. And here's what I love is that it's moments like this that now the people watching the next time that happens, it's mm -hmm. gonna make them go, hmm, I wonder if that is God trying to speak to me. Yeah. And so yeah. even you sharing that, like God is gonna use yeah. that. So it redeems all that other stuff. <laughs> the love handles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love your love handles. Awesome. Um, and so guys, we will reach out to you on Facebook um, so that you can give us your information or better yet, just send your email to afternoons at 951shinefm.com so uh, with your address so we can mail you out uh, your CDs, okay? And this is, so this has been uh, fa our Facebook live stream and this will be on Facebook. Yep, so you so can share it. Share it and if nice. anybody needs a word that you heard during this time that we've had together with Nandisa, Share it on their wall. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of good stuff. Today. Please do, especially. Can I ask if anybody is battling depression? If you know anybody who's battling depression, please do share this because people need to know that there is hope. Yep. Awesome. Bye.